Yo, what's up guys? Joey here, back at it again with another PC build. Hope you guys are doing well. The budget we're gonna be working with in this video is 2,000 bucks. I'm really excited for this build because this is the first build here on the channel that's gonna be using an RTX card. And we're gonna be pairing it with the newly released i7. This is an eight core i7, the 9700K. This is gonna be a full guide, guys. The video will be broken down into three parts. So the first part is we're gonna jump right into the building process. I'm gonna be going over each of the parts and how much they cost as we're building it. And then second, I'm gonna show you guys how to install Windows 10, any necessary drivers you may need. And then last, we're gonna be playing games. So yeah, guys, we went with the RTX 2080 for this build and we're gonna be pairing it with the newly released i7, the 9700K. Now this is an eight core processor, so an up from last gen's i7, which was only a six core processor. So we're entering part number one of this video. So first things first, we're gonna be sticking our CPU into our motherboard. The motherboard we chose to go with has a built-in Wi-Fi. This is the antenna and it's rocking the Z390 chipset. It's currently going for $239 and the i7 goes for $400. So to install the CPU, it's pretty simple. Just lift this up and then just line up the golden arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the motherboard. Don't force it down because that may bend the pins and we don't want that, that's not good. It just falls right into place and then just Set it back down. This thing pops off. Just get out the SATA cables to connect our drives to the motherboard, the hard drive and the SSD. And that's all we're gonna need. No need to worry about the IO shield because this motherboard already has it attached. So we picked up a unique heatsink. This one's by Thermaltake. It's actually this heatsink back here. This PC also has it. So for step one, we're gonna get this plate and we're just gonna stick it behind the motherboard. So we're gonna be sticking the G screws through the middle of this thing right here and just line it up with the four points. All right, so once we stuck all of them through, so now just get all four of the E-nuts and secure them onto the G screws. Make sure this rubber part faces down on the motherboard. So now we're gonna be working with this thing right here. Go ahead and set it on top of the nuts. The A is on my right hand side or the A could be on this side. Just make sure these two are positioned here. And we're gonna be securing this with the F screws. Let's go ahead and get rid of this wrap. We don't want that when we turn on the PC. There's some right here too. All right, so now we're gonna be securing the fan onto the heatsink. We're gonna be using the L screws. So just place it behind like this and screw it all the way in. So we have our finished product here, clip it in. All right, there. So we're gonna be attaching this now. The fan is gonna face this way. So now we're just gonna be sticking this thing. We're just gonna sit it in the middle and then it shouldn't go anywhere if you wiggle it. This heatsink comes with its own thermal paste. I'm gonna be using Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. We're just gonna be putting a pea-sized amount in the center of the CPU. Okay, and now we're finally ready to secure it into place, but of course, first remove this plastic. So in order to secure this CPU heatsink, you're gonna need a screwdriver that's longer than usual. It has to be at least 150 millimeters, like this one right here by Milwaukee, because the screwdriver has to travel all the way down here and then tighten the screw. My genius self, attach this fan. Don't attach this fan before you're gonna screw it in. So now we can secure it into place. Do each one little by little, because then the opposite side's gonna lift up too much. This thing's gonna need power. It's gonna hook up to where it's labeled CPU fan, which is this bottom one right here. All right, guys, so moving on to our RAM installation. We went with 16 gigs, two sticks of eight gigabytes. Very popular Corsair Vengeance in the blue colorway is what we chose. Now that's what you call some clean looking RAM. Okay, so when installing our RAM, very easy installation. Only goes in one way. Go ahead and lift up this one and this one. So I'm first gonna stick it into the back one a little bit and then line it up with the front one and push down till it clips. This thing should pop back up. And then the same thing for the other one. Clip. So this case right here, guys, is by NZXT. It's the H500, an ATX case, comes in several colors, and it goes for 70 bucks. Go ahead and get this thing out. First thing we wanna do is make sure all the points of the motherboard, these things right here, line up with the motherboard standoffs inside of our case. So our motherboard has nine points. And this case right here already has all the motherboard standoffs in the appropriate position, all nine of them, three, three, three. Screws we're gonna be using are inside of here. So I'm gonna be using the 632 screw flat. Then just go ahead and screw in all eight. This one doesn't need one. So this is the gold rated 650 watt power supply from EVGA, currently going for 70. This thing right, this thing right here is gonna provide all the juice for your PC components. So we're gonna be using the CPU power cable. So the VGA power cables to power our graphics card. Right here we got some SATA power cables. We're gonna be using this to power our drives. I'm gonna be hooking up both of them to give me more flexibility with cable management. And then this one right here hooks up to our motherboard. And those are all the cables we need. All right guys, so to enter our power supply, make sure the fan is facing down. 
I'm gonna be using the 632 screws to secure the power supply. When building a PC, do not get intimidated by all the cables. There's pretty much two sets of cables. All the cables from our power supply, which power things. And then we have the case cables right here, which connect these ports to the motherboard. Let's go ahead and take care of these little case cables first. USB 3.0 cable hooks up right here. HD audio cable hooks up right here and make sure the HD audio text is up or else the thing won't go in. And for those of you who have built PCs in the past, you know how convenient this is for us. Look how easy this installation is. Simply line it up and connect, you're done. All right, so moving on to this side of the motherboard. So this clip right here has to clip back here. These things are not attached, so make sure you attach them before installation and plug it in. Moving on up here now, we're gonna be powering our CPU. How am I gonna do this? All right guys, see that right there? I'm plugging in the CPU power cable into that. So this cable also has to clip in and the clip part is on top. I need to remove this fan for now. Oh, oh, I think I got it, I think I got it. We did it. This is not rehearsed, this is my first time working with this case, but if you decide to go with this case, please, please, please plug in the CPU power cable before you actually insert the motherboard inside because that was a pain to plug in. So moving on to our storage devices, we went with a 500 gigabyte SSD and a two terabyte hard drive to store our games from Seagate, 60 bucks. So we're gonna be removing these things by just pulling them out. So in order to get these things to release, you simply just pull down and then they come right off. So we plug in the SATA data cable and a SATA power cable from the power supply. I'm using the M35 flat screws to secure the SSD. That looks good. Now we actually have to hook up the other two ends of the SATA data cables to the motherboard. Our hard drive is gonna go into our drive cage. So we're gonna be plugging in the same cables we did to our SSD. So data and power. And that's how you connect the drives to the motherboard. So now we just gotta power both of our fans with the two fan cables, which you're gonna hook up. Both of them could just plug in right here. So now we're gonna be moving on to stuff that's optional. I bought radiator fans, guys. That means these will not attach right here. Okay, no fans for the front of our case. It's all right. I'm just gonna be sticking our RGB LED strip up here. So now we're gonna plug in the arrow to the far left side of these four pins. So yeah, that's how you would plug in any RGB LED device to the motherboard. Okay guys, so this is a pretty cool new box we got going here by EVGA. I like the packaging, I like the presentation. EVGA, $790. Let's slice this guy open. Slice and dice the RTX 2080. Oh my God. So this card's rocking three display ports, one HDMI port and one type C port. It has a nice little back plate and the front lights up and it's ready to go in. So before we insert our graphics card, we have to remove two expansion brackets. We're gonna be removing the second one and the third one. One and a two. Okay guys, just line it up with the top PCI port. So I got it to line up, now we just push it in. <laughs> and it's in. I love him. All right guys, now to power our GPU, we're gonna be using our VGA cable. So first, we're gonna be plugging in the eight pin, making sure these are attached and that it clips in, just like that. And for this one, we're only gonna be using six pins. So this thing's just gonna be hanging out. And done, our GPU's powered. Now I'm just gonna be throwing some Funko Pops in there. These guys are gonna go inside. Joker may not fit. All right, this guy will go right there. And bad girl, I think I'm gonna put her on top of the GPU. All right, let's see if Joker fits in there. What? Got the trio going here. Very nice. That's dope. If only there was a Batman movie that was coming to theaters soon. But there is a Joker movie on the horizon. Very excited for that. That's gonna be dope. You can catch me at the midnight premiere of that movie. That's pretty cool though, guys. I really like how it came out. What do you guys think? So all the parts used in this build will be linked in the video's description. If you guys also wanna use Funko Pops in your build, I'll link down below the double-sided tape that I use. Pretty much, I put it on the bottom of their feet and then they don't go anywhere, they stay. It's really strong tape. Okay, here we go, guys. Don't blow up. What? So yeah, these lights I got in the background, I'm not doing this PC justice. Let me turn off the rest of the lights. All right, that one's off, this one's off. Well, yeah, guys, I'm really pleased with the way this PC came out. So the RGB LED strip right now is just doing its own thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna install a lighting program, which then allows you to change all the colors and change the speed of the lights too, or it can just be static, which is just one light showing. Anyways, guys, we're moving on to part two now, which is the installation of windows and all necessary drivers you may need. This is a USB flash drive. It already has a bootable ISO of Windows 10. I've made a video on how to create one of these. Links in the description, or you can just buy one. So we're just gonna connect the flash drive to the PC and then turn it on. So since both of the drives in our PC are empty, it's gonna boot directly to the installation. So here we are. Pick your language, and it's just a matter of clicking next. Very simple. So if you had a product key, this is where you would insert it. I do not have a product key, so I'm just gonna click I don't have a product key. 
That means we're now gonna have a watermark on the bottom right hand side of Windows. If you want that to go away and it annoys you, then you just insert a product key and it'll go away. I'm gonna be installing Windows 10 Pro. We're gonna to wanna to do a custom install, so then we could select the drive we want Windows 10 to be installed onto. I'm gonna be selecting our SSD. Next. Now we just wait for our files to copy over. All right, it's done. It's gonna restart now. So we arrived here, which means all the files are now copied onto our SSD. Now this is a matter of just clicking next. It's like when you barely buy a new laptop at Best Buy, this is the same set of process you'll be greeted with. So we've arrived at our desktop, guys. Now this motherboard does have built-in Wi-Fi. I went ahead and already hooked up the antenna to the motherboard, but it's not working. We first need to install a driver, but this is the USB Wi-Fi adapter that I use for every single build. It's pretty much plug and play. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. As you can see down here, we can now connect to a Wi-Fi network. So I went ahead and connected to my home Wi-Fi and now we need to download drivers. So first we're gonna be downloading the motherboard drivers. So we're here on the motherboard's website, select Windows 10 64 bit. And the ones I'm gonna be downloading are the audio driver, I'm gonna be saving it as, so I could just have it on my desktop for convenience. I'm gonna be downloading the LAN driver. This is if you're gonna be using a wired ethernet connection to connect to the internet instead of Wi-Fi. Under utilities, I'm gonna look for the program that lets me control the RGB LED strip, which is this one, ASUS Aura, download. And right here under wireless, we have our Wi-Fi driver, what we needed, download. And as I was scrolling down, I didn't even know this motherboard had Bluetooth, but it does, so that's cool. I'm gonna download that driver as well. Okay, so those are all the drivers I'm gonna be downloading. There's of course more, you can pick and choose whichever ones you want, but I'm good for now. So once you finish downloading all the drivers you're gonna wanna install, we're gonna have to unzip them by right-clicking them and then clicking extract all. So right now it already created a new folder. This is the unextracted one. So our Wi-Fi driver is now unzipped and once it's done, it automatically opens a new folder. So this is the folder that's open. Yep, same thing. Once we do that, we wanna just click the setup process and then it's just a matter of clicking next. You're gonna wanna do that for all your drivers. All right, it's a success. So we're gonna click finish, exit this out and let's test it. Disconnected that and it's now working. So now we could actually use our built-in Wi-Fi. Now we're gonna be installing our graphics card drivers and for that, we're gonna need the GeForce Experience program. Download now. I'm gonna save it to our desktop. So right here's the installation we just downloaded for our graphics card. Right here are all the drivers that have been unzipped and I already installed them. I just wanna tell you something else about them. Some of them may be tricky. I don't want them to confuse you guys. For example, we're just gonna click Bluetooth, right? And you're gonna click Asus Setup. Yes. All it's gonna do is that, and there, it's done. I just wanted to show you guys that real quick in case some of you guys thought, oh, it probably crashed, let me re-click it. No, it just comes up and then disappears. There, it's installed, I know, it's weird. Now, before I install our graphics card drivers, I'm gonna restart the PC after installing all those drivers. So after the restart, we're now gonna be installing the GeForce Experience, agree and install. So as soon as you open up the program and sign in, it automatically starts downloading the drivers and then you just install them and it's gonna take care of everything for us. And our graphics card drivers are now installed. We don't need this anymore. I'm just gonna close it out. So now if we go over to our folder and we go to this PC, we'll see that our PC only reads one drive, not our hard drive. In order to configure our hard drive, we're gonna search up hard disk. And I spelled it wrong. Disk, right here, create and format. It automatically brings up our hard drive and I'm gonna be selecting GPT, okay? All right, so now we just right click this empty space and put new simple volume. We need to give the drive a drive letter. Next, I'm gonna select G since I'm using this drive for games. Next, I'm gonna title it two terabyte HDD. Next, finish and done. Our PC now reads our hard drive. So now when we go back to this PC, our hard drive is actually showing up. So now for the installation of games, I'm gonna be downloading and installing Steam. I just like saving all the installations to my desktop. You can just click run though. So Steam's installing and that was quick, it's done. So when installing a game on Steam or any other platform, you wanna make sure you navigate to the hard drive. So right now I want to install it onto our SSD. So navigate to the G drive. We're gonna create a new folder to stay organized. Steam library, that's cool, okay. And then select it and next, I agree. And now we're installing the game onto our hard drive. So once you're done downloading all your games, you then restart your PC one last time and you're finally ready to start playing. But first, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make sure your RAM's running at its rated speed. Remember, our RAM is rated at 3000 megahertz. Right now, it's currently not running at that. You definitely wanna get your money's worth. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to boot up to the BIOS and change that. So our PC just restarted. Just keep clicking delete on your keyboard. All right, we booted up to our BIOS. All we're gonna be doing is going to right here, AI tweaker, and then where it says auto, we're gonna change that to XMP1. We're gonna be clicking yes. It's not gonna mess with our CPU settings. Okay, automatically change it to 3000 megahertz. 
Now, when we go over here to exit, we're going to click save changes and reset. It's going to tell us the changes we made. So it changed it from auto to 3000 megahertz. And we're just going to click OK and the system will boot up and we're done. All right, guys, we're playing Rainbow Six Siege now. Graphics settings preset is on ultra. Our displays at 1440p. Here we go. Wish me luck. How's the time, Glazzy? Reloading. I right, don't planning. Cover me, boys. No, run. You know, off lane, off lane. All right, we won. Where are they? Come on, show yourself. I want to get at least one, just one. Oh, oh. Yes, headshot. That wasn't a headshot. Carry your ears down. Let's just jump in there. No, no, no. Help me, guys. Oh. Oh, that was so close. All right, guys, let's play tactical. Wait, is someone on top? Yes, there is. There's someone on top, guys. Oh my God. There's still one on top of us. So let's just rush the last guy. Run. No, he's right. Oh, the last was corner. Oh, oh. No one's in here, we're good. Loading. Yay! Good job, guys. I'm sorry, Lord. Alright, guys, so we're playing PUBG now. This is the new map that just came out. My first time playing on this map. So we're playing the game on the high settings preset. Can you see me? Whoa. He's dead. I feel like I should be using this now. No! No! That was close. That was close. Oh, he's dead. He had like no health. So starting it off with Black Ops 4, guys, these are the settings we're gonna be playing the game on. Pretty high settings. All games will be tested out at 1440p resolution, as you can see up here. All right, let's get this done. Threat destroyed. They're gone. Oh, get him! Get, get that! And go down. Missed everything. No! <laughs> Who's a dog? <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Guys, we're playing Overwatch on the Ultra Settings Graphics Preset. Oh, he's right here! Get him! Don't let him run away! Alright, he's down. Alright, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it, guys. Oh my god! Who's gonna go? Guys? Punch you in the f Oh, you little... We're pushing over 200 FPS at 1440p resolution. I would say that's pretty good. Okay, I got one. Oh my jeez, this is not looking good. What? How is the person still alive? Oh. Oh. Oh, can't, can't save my life. So that wraps up our gameplay testing, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Many more RTX builds coming up. If you want to be notified when they come out, turn on bell notifications for the channel. Anyways, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Stay frosty. Peace. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get it over in my head.
white t-shirt, blue jeans I can never get enough of you Bright sneakers on, getting ready for a flashback Time keeps moving on, looking at your face 